Good morning. Welcome to True Grace Bible Ministry. And once again, my name is Mike Marcheski. Uh, great to have you guys with us. And, excuse me a moment here. Uh, again, for those of you that aren't familiar with this ministry, again, it's True Grace Bible Ministry. We're from a small town in uh, northeastern Pennsylvania. And we teach the Word of God rightly divided. Study the show they self-approved unto God, a workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And we believe that when we do this, it clears up those seemingly contradictions and confusion that is so, so abundant in churches today because they have no idea or understanding of right division because they've never been taught it. And their main focus are the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and the emphasis has been put on the red letters of Jesus, that we need to follow those red letters. And if we follow those red letters, then God will build this church that he said, that Jesus said he would build upon Peter. But right division, I believe, clears that up, and we've been doing that for the past five or six years, trying to help folks see the clarity of the scriptures rightly divided. And we're, we're going to talk about some things, maybe next few weeks, about those red letters. You know, should we really be following those red letters? Or should we be following the, the commandments of the Lord that he gave to the Apostle Paul? And when we do that, uh, I believe it clears up those seemingly contradictions and the confusions we've seen. So what we're going to do is look at uh, some of the foundations and fundamentals, okay, really of right division. You know, should we be following the red letters? So what we're going to do is, um, and for some of you this may be repeat, may be repetition, but uh, as I was taught, repetition is the mother of all learning. Repetition is the mother of all learning, okay? So, if this is repetition for some of you, maybe there'll be something in there that you never heard before, or something that will build upon what you do know now that you can teach others. Because, uh, doesn't the Apostle Paul tell us that? Uh, that just, in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 2, he says, and the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men, who shall be able to teach others. See, that's what we're to be doing, is, is teaching others of, of what we've been taught. And when we have been taught the word of truth, rightly divided, then we can teach others how to rightly divide, to help them in their walk with the Lord to, to clear up all this confusion we see today. And again, I believe it stems back to the red letters and that we have to follow the words of Jesus. And the bottom line is, you know, when Jesus walked the earth, was he really speaking to us for today? And I believe the answer is a big resounding no. He was not speaking to us. But we're going to see who he was speaking to here. So let's, with that, go to Matthew chapter 10. Matthew chapter 10. We're going to see who Jesus was speaking to, okay? So Matthew 10, verse 5. Uh, Jesus just got done choosing his, um, his the 12 disciples, his 12 apostles. And in verse 5, he says, These 12 Jesus sent forth and commanded them, saying, Go not into the way of the Gentiles, and to any city of the Samaritans enter ye not. But go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And as ye go, preach, as ye, and as ye go, preach, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. So, even the apostles, when they were sent out, they were not to go to the Gentiles, but to the who? The lost sheep of the house of Israel. Uh, turn to Matthew 15. Matthew 15, verse 22. And behold, a woman of Canaan came out of the same coast and cried unto him, saying, 
Have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. My daughter is grievously vexed with the devil. But he answered her not a word, and his disciples came, besought him, saying, Send her away, for she crieth after us. See, Jesus knew his ministry, okay? That's why he didn't answer her immediately. But verse 24, But he answered, and it's just, this is in red, by the way, And he answered her and said, I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So, who was Jesus sent to? Who did he send his apostles to? The lost sheep of the house of Israel. Uh, Romans 15.8 Romans 15.8 Now I say that Jesus Christ was, that's past tense, a minister of the circumcision for the truth of God to confirm the promises made unto the fathers. So, he was sent to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. His ministry was to the circumcision. The circumcision, we've looked at numerous times, is concerning those members of the house of Israel, the commonwealth of Israel. So, when he walked the earth, I think it's very, very plain that Jesus' ministry was to Israel. And, why didn't he answer that Gentile woman? I think it's very simple, well, excuse me for saying that, okay? Nothing's very simple when it comes to understanding scriptures. It seems like it can be when we write the divide, okay? Uh, Ephesians chapter 2. See, some of these things that we're going to talk about this morning, most people have never heard, okay? Remember what Paul said in 2 Timothy 2, too, that we're to teach others what we've been taught. But we need to speak the truth in love. And when we bring these things out, and I've had many people get upset at me because I say, well, what Jesus said on earth wasn't to you. Okay? It was to Israel. They can't handle that fact because over the years, should I say the past 200 years, roughly, uh, the churches, the denominations, your your big establishments are preaching from Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John and saying we need to follow this and then they spiritualize what Jesus was saying to Israel to try and make it fit us. And that's why the church is in shambles. It's in chaos. It's, there's nothing but confusion. Okay? And that's why the church is as weak as it is today. Okay? We don't have a strong foundation because they're building on foundations that uh, were, were set for Israel and not foundations that are set for the church, the body of Christ in this dispensation. It's that simple. So, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 11. Wherefore remember that ye being in time past Gentiles in the flesh, who are called uncircumcision, by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh, made by hands, that at that time, in time past, Ye were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel, strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope, and without God in the world. So, one of the reasons why Jesus did not address that, uh, that woman that we looked at there, the Canaanite woman, is because she was of a Gentile. And what was the position of a Gentile at that time? They were not part of the commonwealth of Israel. They were strangers from the covenants. Aliens without a Messiah. And 90 some percent of denominations, well, every denomination, let me rephrase that, uh, doesn't understand this passage and don't teach it. I can say that with confidence. Because if they did, then they wouldn't be in the position they are if they understood just that little bit that we talked about in these, what, four verses things would be different, okay? So, while on earth, that church that Jesus promised to build upon Peter, see, there, here's, here's a, if you would, a, a seemingly contradiction, because in Matthew 16, Jesus was going to use Peter to, to build the church, 
And then when we go to uh, Corinthians, uh, Jesus himself, because Jesus is speaking to Paul, okay, so the words that Paul writes are the words of Jesus. Uh, he's telling us that, that Paul is the master builder. See, it, it, there seems like a contradiction, the seemingly contradiction. But when we rightly divide, we see that Peter was to build that church for the, the kingdom on earth where Paul is now building the church in this dispensation of grace, okay, because God's dealing with Israel has been put on hold because of their rejection. Will he pick it up one day? Sure he will, okay. But just those little things need to be taught to people. And repetition is the mother of all learning. So when Jesus was here on earth, he was preaching to them about this kingdom that was going to be coming to earth. So let's go back to Matthew. Um, before you go to Matthew, you're here in Ephesians. Keep your finger there. We're going to come right back here, okay? But go to Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6, and as I said, uh, while on earth, you know, Jesus taught Israel about the kingdom that was coming to earth. Matthew 6, verse 9. After this manner, therefore, pray ye, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. See, it was about the kingdom coming to earth to establish this kingdom that will be on earth. That Jesus will one day, that's the reason for his resurrection for Israel, um, Acts chapter 2 verse 30, that he would be raised to sit on the throne of David on earth. Okay? And the difference now, excuse me a second, <coughs> the difference of what Jesus um, dispensed to Paul is that we, the church, the body of Christ, have a heavenly inheritance. And the teachings are heavenly, not earthly. So I said we'd be going right back to Ephesians. Look at Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3. It says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. Okay? In heavenly places in Christ. Ephesians 2, 6. And he has raised us up together and has made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. See, folks, we, the church, the body of Christ, have all spiritual blessings in the heavenlies. Yes, we're here physically, but we are a spiritual entity. Whereas the dealings with Israel were on the physical aspect. And they're going to be here on earth. So there's a difference, isn't there? And again, right division is the key, isn't it? Okay, we already looked at Romans 15 a, that Jesus was a minister of the circumcision, wasn't he? Let's read it again now. Romans 15 a. And keep your finger in Ephesians, because we're coming right back here. Romans 15, 8. Now I say that Jesus Christ was a minister of the circumcision for the truth of God to confirm the promises made unto the fathers. See, all those promises made in the Old Testament, Jesus came to confirm to Israel. His death, burial, and resurrection promises, he confirmed them, didn't he? So, these passages so far are so crucial to helping people understand right division. And those that claim that we, as, as uh, folks that rightly divide, we take it and we twist the scriptures, if you have found that I've twisted any of these scriptures, please contact me. Let me know. Okay? If I've, con if I've twisted these in any way. And if I have, please show me how you can correct me. Okay? Alright. So, 
back now to Ephesians chapter 3, as we just seen Jesus was administered to the circumcision, and that now the Lord Jesus Christ, who seated in the heavenlies, has sent the Apostle Paul to us, the church, the body of Christ. And we can see that in Ephesians chapter 3, verses 1 and 2. For this cause I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ for you Gentiles, if you have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God, which is given me to your word, how that by revelation he made, on, made known unto me the mystery, as I wrote afore in a few words. And what he's referring to is the passages there in Ephesians chapter 2 about the one new man, about Jew and Gentile being uh, made the one new man, the church, the body of Christ. And that there's no difference uh, between Jew and Gentile. We're all one in Christ today. Whereas in time past, there was that distinction. And it was of the circumcision of the flesh. That's how God distinguished. Today, you're either in Christ or you're in Adam. There is no difference. Okay? So, uh, what I've just said now is that Christ has sent Paul to us. And he was dispensed the word of God for us in this dispensation. Dispensation is God, is God dispensing, giving out his word to us. He gave it to Paul for us. Dispensation, okay, don't uh, misunderstand me. The definition of dispensation is not a period of time per se, okay? But, in time past, if we look at dispensations in that way, do they cover a period of time? It, it sure seems that way, okay? Do we know the length of time of this dispensation that God's giving us now? No, we don't. It could be over before I finish this message. Okay? As they say and use the word intimate. It could be at any moment that the Lord could say, Okay, that's it. Well, I'm going to catch up. I'm going to bring them up to me. The church, the body of Christ, they're going to meet me in the clouds. They're going to be with me forevermore. 1 Thessalonians 4. And then we're going to come back to Israel. Jacob's trouble. Daniel 70th week. Okay, we're going to complete what I promised back there. I have to, this is God speaking now, I have to punish Israel. And he's going to do that for seven years. Okay, so, but today, Paul is our apostle. Alrighty, look at Romans chapter 11, verse 13. Romans 11, 13. For I speak to you Gentiles, inasmuch as I am the apostle of the Gentiles, I magnify my office. You know, so is Paul a liar? You know, is the Bible is the word of God. It's God breathed, it's God inspired. Um, so did Paul lie when he says I'm the apostle? If he lied and Paul's not an apostle, why is it in our Bible? You know, think about that. Romans fifteen uh, verses 15 to 18. Uh, Nevertheless, brother, I have written more bold, the more boldly to you, and to you in some sort, as putting you in mind, because of the grace that is given to me of God, that I should be the minister of Jesus Christ to the Gentiles, ministering the gospel of God, that the offering up of the Gentiles might be acceptable, being sanctified by the Holy Ghost. Verse 17. I have therefore whereof I may glorify through Jesus Christ in those things which pertain to God, for I will dare not speak of any of those things which Christ has not wrought by me to make the Gentiles obedient by word and deed. So gang, it's, it's pretty simple. Paul's our apostle. We're Gentiles. And as I spoke before, I believe that uh, in this dispensation that God looks down here at all people as Gentiles, 
Okay, we're of all nations today. God does not distinguish between nations as he did in time past. So even that country called Israel, in God's eyes today, are no different than any other country, any other country in the world. They're, you cannot distinguish. So Paul is the apostle to all nations. And, you know, here's something interesting. People say, well, Paul's the apostle to the Gentiles. Okay. So if people use this definition of, well, a Gentile is anybody other than a Jew, which I don't believe fits for us today, in time past did it? Sure. <coughs> Excuse me, gang, my, my allergies are acting up. I'll be with you in a moment. <coughs> But if we use that definition, <coughs> then who would preach to the, the Jewish people today? Doesn't make sense, does it? So, we see that <coughs> Paul is our apostle of the Gentiles, all nations, excuse me. <coughs> Alrighty, now, what we want to see, and I've been mentioning this a little bit, go back to Matthew 16 about this church, okay, uh, <clears throat> and that Jesus chose Peter to be the, the spokesperson, if you may, of this church, and it's the Jerusalem church that was already uh, established before Paul comes on the scene. Okay, so let's look at some of these things here now. Matthew 16, verse 16 to 18. And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon bar -Jesus, Simon bar, -Bar -Jonah, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say also unto thee, that thou art Peter, upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. So here we see that Jesus is going to use Peter. Okay? So now, as I said earlier, just to show some comparison, okay? Come in with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 3. <clears throat> Excuse me again. Uh, I lost my spot here for a moment. I'm sorry. But 1 Corinthians 3. And we look at Paul being the master builder. I'm going to be straight with you. I, I didn't plan on using this comparison. Um, so I'm because I'm in chapter 2, not chapter 3. That's a good reason. So, <clears throat> chapter 3, verse 10. I apologize. So, what I'm getting at is that God used Peter to build that Jerusalem church, that Jewish church, okay? And here in verse 10, it says, According to the grace of God which is given to me, as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation, and another build, buildeth thereon. But let every man take heed how he buildeth thereupon. So we know that Jesus Christ is the foundation, okay? The big rock. And he used Peter, the Peter, as a little rock, okay? And that Paul is our apostle, and he is the master builder. And even in... Romans now. Let's go to Romans and look what Paul himself says in Romans 15. In verse 20, he says, Yea, so I have strived to preach the gospel, not where Christ was named, lest I should build upon another man's foundation. So he says it here, <clears throat> that he's the master builder for us, that he doesn't want to build upon what Peter started. Because what the commands that Jesus gave to Peter were for that 
church that was to be established um, through Peter, and we're going to see in some passages here when it was established, and that Paul doesn't come onto the scene until Acts chapter 9. And where most people want to state that the church started in Acts chapter 2, or even prior to that with Peter and uh, those folks at that time, and even back to John the Baptist or wherever you want to go with it. But Paul doesn't come on the scene until Acts chapter 9, okay? So how can the church already be established and that uh, Paul says he doesn't want to build on Peter's foundation, but he's been giving a new dispensation for us. So do you see what I'm getting at? See where all the confusion could be if we don't rightly divide the word of truth? So, let's go to Acts chapter 2 now, okay? Let's go to Acts chapter 2, and verse 38. Acts chapter 2, verse 38. <clears throat> it says, Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, not forgiveness, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promises unto you and to your children, to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. And with many other words did he testify and exhort, saying, Save yourselves from this untoward generation. Then they that gladly received his word were baptized, and the same day there were added unto them about 3,000 souls. So, this is the day of Pentecost, where they say the church, the birthday of the church began. But, if there were, what, 3,000 added unto them, that means something was already established, wasn't there? And, who is he speaking about? Who are the them? Okay, who are the them? Turn back to Acts chapter 1. Acts chapter 1, <clears throat> and look at verse 15. And in those days Peter stood up in the midst of the disciples and said, The number of the names together were about 120. So, by comparing the scriptures like this, that there were 3,000 added unto them, I think it's fitting to say that the them were the 120 of that church that... Jesus told Paul that he would give him the keys to, okay? That he would build this church upon Peter. And there were 120 in that upper room. And then the day of Pentecost, sometime shortly after that, there were 3,000 added to that church, the Jerusalem church. And some don't like this phrase, but the kingdom church, okay? Has nothing to do with us, the church, the body of Christ. And that's where right division comes in. It makes it clear that the words that Jesus spoke to the Apostle Paul are not the same thing that he spoke to Peter. They're different. We must clarify that and then teach others. And if we do that, I believe it will clear up a lot of confusion we have in our churches today. So, let's... Uh, let's Go now to 1 Timothy chapter 1. 1 Timothy chapter 1. And verse 15. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am chief. Howbeit for this cause I obtain mercy that in me first... Jesus Christ might show forth all long suffering for a pattern to them which should hereafter believe on him to life everlasting. So here again uh, we see some key words. First, long suffering, a pattern. See, Paul is our pattern. Alrighty? Um, Paul, I believe, being the first in the church to body of Christ in this dispensation. Okay, he was saved by grace and grace alone through his faith. 
he believed who the Lord was. He didn't do any works. He didn't have to do any works. Okay? And that's the same for us. And that's what we see right division. In time past, the day of Pentecost, we just read it. They had to believe and be, be baptized. Read Matthew chapter 15, uh, verse 16 and on. He who believe and is baptized shall be saved. Okay, it was faith plus their works. For us today, it is simply faith alone. All right, and that's where right division comes in. And this is where we need to see that Paul is our pattern. He is our apostle. We looked at some of those passages, okay? So, you know, the question is, everybody, uh, legalism, okay, to bring that in. You know, oh, we have to be obedient we have to be obedient to the Lord. Be obedient. Obedient, 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 obedient. So the question is, if you're disobedient to what the Apostle Paul says in his epistles, if you're disobedient to Paul, are you disobedient to the Lord? And believe me, by no means do I want to bring any type of uh, uh, wrong teaching here and saying that... Uh, you know, we, 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 we have to do these things, we have to be stingent, and if we don't do this, uh, that, you know, bring in legalism. I am way, way apart from legalism, okay? We have grace to do what we want. Should we do everything? No. But do we have the right to? Yes, we do. And that's what Paul says in Corinthians, you know. All things are lawful for us to do, but all things are not expedient. They're not good for you. But Paul is our apostle. Uh, look at 1 Corinthians 14.37. 1 Corinthians 14.37. And again, repetition is the mother of all learning. I know some of you folks have heard me repeat these passages. If any man think himself to be a prophet or spiritual, let him acknowledge that the things that I write unto you are the commandments of the Lord. Okay? So, when we follow Paul's teachings... Who are we following? 1 Corinthians 11, verse 1. Be ye followers of me, even I, as I also am of Christ. 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 16. Wherefore I beseech you, be ye followers of me. For this cause I have sent to you Timotheus, who is my beloved Son, and faithful in the Lord, who shall bring you into remembrance of all my ways, which be in Christ, as I teach everywhere in every church. Okay? See? As Paul teaches, he wants Timothy to teach others. Remember what we read there in 2 Timothy 2.2? 2? You know, that the things that have been taught to us, we need to teach to others. And we need to preach Jesus Christ according to Romans 16.25. Now to him that has power to establish you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery which was kept secret since the world began but now is made manifest and by the scriptures of the prophets, according to the commandment of the everlasting God, made known to all nations for the obedience of faith. See, we're to preach Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery through our Apostle Paul, not the words and the red letters of Jesus Christ. And when we do this, it will clear up seemingly contradictions and confusion. Father, give us all understanding Help these words of mine be clear and let your word come through clear and effective. In Christ's name, amen.